Hey everybody, this is Ben with devslopes.com. In this video, we're going to set up one of the most complicated and arguably one of the most important scripts of the entire game. We're going to do the groundwork for our override orb script. This script is going to be the one that handles this ball that you see here, the orb that we created in the last video. It's going to handle dragging this around, throwing it, colliding, and all of those important actions. And there's actually a lot to it. So I hope you're ready. We're going to take it nice and slow to make sure that you understand every part of it and try to minimize the risk of getting lost along the way. Let's start by going over to our models folder in the project inspector. We are going to go to our override orb folder, which is a subfolder of field objects. And we're going to go ahead and create a new script. So right click on override orbs folder. Go to create C sharp script, and we're just going to call this override orb. Cool. And so we don't forget, we're going to attach it to our prefab. There we go. Now that it's attached, let's double click on the override orb script and get right to it. We're going to have a lot of variables through this script, so we'll do those first. Let's add a serialized field, and that's going to be private float throw speed. And we're going to set that to a default of 30.0f. Let's add another, oop, not a selection base. Let's add another serialized field. And this is going to be private float collision stall time. And we'll set that to 2.0f as a default. One more serialized field. And that's going to be private float stall time. And we'll set that to 5.0f, so five seconds. And then we're going to have three serialized fields to represent audio clips. The first one will be serialized field, private, audio clip, drop sound. Next, we'll have serialized field, private, audio clip, success sound, and then serialized field, Private audio clip throw sound. So that's all for our serialized fields. But we need a few more private variables. But before we make those, let's just kind of review so that we don't get lost here. The throw speed is going to be the speed at which the ball travels. Collision stall time represents the time before we automatically destroy the orb after it collides with something, whether that's the ground or a droid or a building in our map or anything else. Basically, if it bounces off something, we're going to destroy it after whatever time is set here. Stall time is going to be how long we want it to survive if it doesn't collide with anything. So say, for example, we throw the ball and we throw it way over the top of the buildings and our droid and it falls off the edge and never lands. Well, we don't want it just falling forever, so we need to destroy it at some point. That's what that time's for. And the drop sound, success sound, and throw sound are just gonna be sound effects that we use to help enhance our gameplay and provide a better overall user experience. Next, let's create private float last x, and that's gonna track the last x position of where the user's input was at. Then we've got private float last y, which is going to track the exact same thing. And then we've got private bool released, tell us whether or not the user has released the ball. Private bool holding, which tells us whether or not the user is currently holding the ball or dragging it around the screen. Private bool tracking collisions, and we're going to set that to false by default. 
And that's there to help debounce the orb. And what I mean by that is, say for example, we throw the orb, it hits a droid, and then it hits the ground. In that case, we don't really care, but what if it's the other way around? What if we throw the ball, it lands on the ground, and then rolls towards the droid and just happens to hit it? We don't want to count that as a catch. So after the first collision with something, we want to stop tracking the collisions. Next, we'll need a private rigid body, rigid body, and then a private audio source, audio source. And then we're going to create a private variable of a type that doesn't exist yet. We are going to need an enum or enumeration to track what the user is currently doing. And we're going to call that enum an input status. So just type that in for now, private input status, and we're going to call it input status with a lowercase i. Now let's declare that enum so that that error goes away and we can kind of understand what we're doing. Private enum input status with a capital I. And we are going to have four states for this. Grabbing, holding, releasing, and none. What this does for us is it lets us know whether the user is currently grabbing the object. So if it's an input down or a mouse down, holding it, so if they're dragging it around the screen, or if they're in the action of releasing it. So they've removed their input, whether it's their mouse or their finger, and they are trying to throw the ball. Or none, if the user is not interacting with it in any way. For example, when it first loads before the user touches the orb. All right, now that we've got our C of variables declared, let's go down and create private void awake. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to assign audio source to get component audio source. And then we're going to assign rigid body to get component of type rigid body, the lowercase b. So it's going to search the component, go find those, come back with them. Now that those should be assigned, we're going to do a whole bunch of assertions to make sure that we're going to have all of the info we need. So let's say assert and make sure it's from the unity engine dot assertions dot is not null audio source cert dot is not null rigid body assert dot is not null drop sound cert dot is not null Success sound. Cert dot is not null. Pro sound. And that's it. That's all of our assertions. Awesome. The next Unity function we're going to need is void update. Right there. So private void update. Now, we're going to hold off on the heavy lifting that's going to take place in here, but we are going to set a couple of things up first. The first thing we want to check is if the player has released the ball, because if they do, then there's nothing else that we're going to do with it. We don't want to be able to catch the ball midair. Um, we don't want users to be able to manipulate it after the initial throw. So we're going to check and see if they've released the ball, and if they have, well, then we're just going to return as, again, nothing for us to do. And then we're going to put a placeholder here, and we're going to say if holding. So if the player is currently holding the ball, then we're going to want to track their input. 
and we'll come back to this. We're just going to stub out the basic idea of what we want to do here. In a way, we're just doing pseudocode, which is just listing out the steps that need to take place without actually putting them into place just yet. So after we've checked if they've released the ball and if they're holding it, we're going to want to update their input status. We want to see what the user is currently doing. And then based on their input status, we're going to react to that status. Setting that up is easy enough. So let's just go ahead and step out these functions right now for the reaction. We're going to say switch and based on the current input status, we are going to have one of four cases. So in the case where the user is currently grabbing it, we're going to call a function to handle the grab. In the case of input status out of holding, we're going to have another function. So let's just put a break in there for now. And then case input status dot releasing. We're going to have another function to handle that. And then we've just got the case where it's input status dot none. And we'll just want to return at that point. And if it's a default, then we'll just return there as well. Cool. So let's put in some comments to hold this place and say function grab underneath the case input status dot grabbing function hold in the case of the user holding the orb under input status dot releasing case, let's put release. And I actually want to change this hold function name that I put in here in this comment to drag because that's that's more accurate for what we're doing. And then we're not doing anything for the none status or default. So let's take out this comment saying react to that status. Now here, for the update input status, we're going to want to call a function here. So let's change this to a function name. Update input status, but we're still going to have it commented out. So the basic flow for update is we check if the orb's been released. And then we check if they're currently holding the orb. And if they're holding the orb, we want to track their input. So we'll say follow input. And then we want to update their input status to see what the user is currently doing. And then we'll react to that status. Now that we understand that flow, let's go ahead and take these out of comments. And we're going to see a bunch of red because we don't have these functions yet. So we're going to take care of this red by stubbing out the functions that we need. We're not going to fill them up with content just yet, but we are going to make sure that they exist. We'll start by making private void update input status. And there are no parameters, so it's empty parentheses. And then we're going to make a function called private void follow input. Next, we've got private void grab. And then another function called private void drag. And then we've got private void release. And then we're going to need two helper functions that we haven't really gotten to yet, but we're going to go ahead and put them in. The first is going to be private vector two get input position. And the next is going to be private void. And we're just going to call this power down. 
we're just going to say destroy game object. Get rid of the current orb. Okay, Whew. that was a lot of work. Now, just to review, let's go look at our functions. We've got all of these variables here. We've got an enum called input status. And then in our update cycle, we're checking if they've released the ball, check if they're holding the ball, and if they are, track their input, update the input status to see what the user is currently doing, if they've touched the ball, if they're dragging it, or if they're releasing it. And then based on their most current status, we're going to react to it by either grabbing the ball, dragging the ball around, or releasing it to throw it. Now that we've got the groundwork done for this script, we can move on and start adding some really exciting functionality to this orb. I'm, I'm excited. This is really cool stuff. Great job following along. I know this is a lot of code, but great job. This is Ben with devslopes.com, and we'll see you next time.